Swadi. Yeah. <laughs> 
comfortably seated in God's presence. Praise the Lord and finally on the covenant highway of life. 
Congratulations. We shall be taking a call to worship from Joel chapter 2, verses 21 to 27. Joel chapter 2, 21 to 27. We shall be reading responsively. Verse 21 beginning. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. 22. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in your God. For he had given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. 24. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. 26. Let's echo verse 27 together. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Once again, you're welcome to church. Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm on covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Very shortly, we shall be rising up on our feet, interceding unto the Lord, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. With this understanding, shall we be up on our feet, lifting our voices unto the Lord, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. Pray unto the Father, our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altars all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. The prayer point is on the screen. Our Lord and our God, in the name of Jesus. Let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, O oh Lord, let that word continue to come, O oh Lord. Your word, your word, your word to set us up, O oh Lord, in every area of our life, O oh Lord. It's our covenant highways here, O oh Lord. Father, release your word unto your people, O oh Lord, in every service, O oh Lord, in all our altars, O oh Lord, in the covenant of prayer, O oh Lord, in regular service, O oh Lord, midweek service, oh Lord, and every other service, O oh Lord, in midweek services, O oh Lord, including our winner sister fellowship services, O oh Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be a continuous increase of the word, O Lord, from our altars all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord. Lord, you send that word, O Lord, and the word increase, O Lord, mightily, O Lord, amongst your people, O Lord. Let the word continuously come, O Lord, for where shall we go, O Lord, for the heart, the, the word of life, O Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a continuous increase of the word, O Lord, from our altars, O Lord, all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we call upon your holy name, O Lord. Let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, 
Pray in your understanding, pray in the Holy Spirit, Lord. But please don't be silent. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord, to the glory and praise of your name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, O Lord, resulting in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father and our Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be, O Lord, a continuous increase of the word from my altar all through this year. And let this result, O Lord, in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. You sent your word, O Lord, amongst us, O Lord, and the people increase, O Lord. Father, let it continue to come, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a continuous increase of the word, O Lord, from my altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let there be a continuous increase of the word, O Lord, in all our altars all through this year. And let this result, O Lord, in the continuous growth of this church, to the glory and praise of your name, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, let there be a continuous increase of the word from our altar all through this year, resulting in the continuous growth of this church, O Lord. Lift your hands unto the Lord. Appreciate him. God has heard us. Thank him and thank him and thank him. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. I'm following my covenant higher of life. In Psalm chapter 116, 17, he said, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for the end of the month, Thanksgiving. Our pastor in the house, Pastor Popular, said, Life is a gift from God, and living is a privilege. Based on this understanding, I want all of us to be on our feet for Thanksgiving. If you have children for dedication, you can march forward in the first row. Those that are here to thank God for their birthday, God has done something in their life. You want to appreciate and thank God. You march forward. Let's all of us be on our feet. Let's all of us be on our feet. As we welcome those that are here with their children for dedication, those that are here for their birthday, and also today we have the hospitality and protocol unit. They are here to thank God for what God has done in their life for the batch A. Also in our midst, we have Panam David Abo and his wife. They are thanking God for their promotion and mission for their children and also their birthday. Please let's begin to march forward for our Thanksgiving as welcome the choir to give us a danceable song. See what you done for me. See how you set me free. You are the living God. There's no one like you. See how you healed me. See how you set me free. Oh, you are the living God.
give your hands to God and give him thanks. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Let us thank God for the gift of life the Lord has kept us alive. We saw the first Sunday in the month and today the last Sunday. Give thanks to God. Give him thanks for the gift of life, the joy of salvation, opportunity to be alive, to see another day. He said, because he lives, we shall live also. Lord, we thank you for giving up victory, for identifying the counsel and the will of the enemy, for making your counsel to prevail. Say the last Sunday, the month of June. Oh, we thank you. Thank you for sitting up to the first half of the year. First half of the year. Lord, thank you. Be back in fire. For the supernatural growth of your church, live your Jahi. So saved, life transformed, destiny revived, blessings delivered, miracles wrought. All you have done, preservation of lives and properties and destinies. To you alone behold the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Father, as a church and individuals, we have come to thank you. You said in Isaiah chapter 51, verse 11, that redeemed of the Lord shall return. We have returned to Zion with joy and gladness to give you thanks for your mighty acts in our midst and in our lives. Since the beginning of the year, all through the first half of the year, in the midst of the year, and the month of June 2023, to you alone be all the glory. You said because you live, we shall live also. Thank you for giving us the gift of life and upholding our lives. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for every act of yours in this church. Supernatural conception, supernatural delivery of miracle babies, marital settlement, supernatural growth of your church. Spiritual growth, numerical growth, financial growth, and the way you are glorifying the saints. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you and thank you for the diverse liftings and promotions, miracles and testimonies. To you alone be all the glory. Lord, accept our appreciation in the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone that marked or is marking their birthday in the month of June, you shall live long. You will return again next year with greater joy. Whatever be your desires, be made your birthday gift. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone that is out there, thank God for one thing or the other, your miracle shall be preserved. You will not lose a source of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here today, whatever be the reason why you are out here, the Lord will perfect for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, we thank you for this miracle children. You blessed us with. Today we receive them with joy. And we say to you, be all the glory. These children are hereby covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. The joy that you have brought unto your parents shall be permanent. Today you have brought into the house of God. You will dwell in the house of God forever. You shall live long. Your destiny shall be preserved. Today you are babies. You also will become parents. You will go to become parents. Brothers and sisters will follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now you are anointed with oil now. Go and fulfill your destiny. The mark of the Lord is upon you. No one shall trouble you. You shall be wise. You shall be strong. You shall be healthy. You shall be favored. You shall be fruitful. You shall be honored. You shall be distinguished. You shall go from glory to glory. You shall not be a concern. You shall be great. You shall be mighty. You shall be blessed. Your lives are preserved. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Parents, you are blessed. More children, if you desire, and more blessings. And for every family in this church, believe in God for miracle children, receive yours now. Will you visit children as points of contact for your desired miracle children? Receive now. In this midst of the year, you too will consist supernaturally. Nine months after today, you will turn to miracle babies. Everyone believe in God for marital settlement, your desires are granted. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven children. One month, eleven children. Give God a big hand. Also for our hospitality and protocol unit. <laughs> Hallelujah. On behalf of the church, we want to thank God for your lives. We ask for more grace, more wisdom, more strength upon your lives. You have been serving God faithfully. God keep on rewarding you and preserve every one of you. Your desires be granted in the name of Jesus Christ. For Mr. Pana, Panam, David, Abu, and the wife, uh, for their promotion and the admission of their children this week, what are they? Be blessed. Be blessed forever. Enjoy your blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. And for everyone, including Pastor Roland and the family, uh, do their thanksgiving for their 
successful celebration of life for their departed father. Be blessed. All of you shall live long and see your children, children, and be great in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, all of you, you are blessed. Let's sing for our celebrants, by the celebrants. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Now lift up your offerings, Lord. We cannot pay for what you have done for us. We give our token of appreciation. Receive from our hands, preserve perfect and multiply our blessings. Make all to return to with joy. Let heavens open up our finances for the advancement of your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll be dancing back, drop our offerings. See you again next month. God bless you. Congratulations. You are good and your mercy is forever. the Lord and finally on the Covenant Highway of Life. Congratulations. It's announcement time. Put those hands together for him. Welcome to our Covenant Day of Marital Breakthroughs and End of Month Thanksgiving Stroke Dedication Service. In this service, every marital crisis or delay and every, and every everlasting mountain on the part of Anyone's marital breakthrough shall be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Number one, praise the Lord. Be reminded that we are in the midst of the year prophetic season. We are admonished to engage in the daily prayer and gospel raids throughout the season. Remember, there is a place for everyone in a revival. Your place shall not be taken in this revival season. Amen. Number two, covenant hour of prayer continues and resumes tomorrow, then Monday all through to Saturday, the time remains 6 a.m. daily. Number three, Believers Foundation class. The Believers Foundation class and membership class holds every Monday at the Worldby Complex by 5 p.m. This is for the benefit of all new converts and first-timer members who brought new members First-timers should encourage them to participate in the class. Number four, Kingdom Advancement Prayer Squad holds every Tuesday at the Youth Chapel. The time remains 5 p.m. All members of the squad are expected to be in attendance. New members are also welcome. Number five, the online sale of admission forms to Faith Academy Network for JS. S1 supplementary admission as well as JSS2 transfer admission and is still ongoing. Interested applicants are encouraged to purchase forms via the ACES official website www.eclfcww.org. Sales of forms will end on Sunday, the 2nd of July 2023. Please note that the scheduled examination date for the two classes, that is JSS1 and JSS2, is Saturday, the 15th of July, 2023. Number six, praise the Lord. Midway communion service, a midway communion service holds on Wednesday, the 28th of June, 2023. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast to break with the communion during the service, the time remains 5 p.m. Number seven, ordained workers meeting, the Dickens Assembly holds a June edition of ordained workers meeting immediately after the third service in the world be mega complex hall. All ordained workers are expected to be in attendance. Number eight, the Junior Bible School announcement. 
Registration for the Junior Bible School 2023 has commenced. All members, parents, and guardians are admonished to enroll their children and wards for life transforming encounters and impartation. It is scheduled to hold between Monday 14 to Friday 25th, August 2023. Number nine, marriage seminar. The July edition of our marriage seminar holds on Friday, the 28th of July, 2023, at the Alpha Church. The time remains 5 p.m. This is mandatory for all intended couples desiring to get wedded this year. God bless you as you come. Number 10, covenant naming. The following families have been blessed with babies, Mr. and Mrs. Michael Oji, baby girl. I thought you were clapping louder. Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Diala, baby boy. Please check the notice board for details of their covenant naming. Number 11, wedding announcement. Praise the Lord. Two intended couples wed next Saturday, the 1st of July, 2023, here at Living Faith Church, Jahi. They are sister Stella in Young and brother Michael Udo, and sister Ochiedu and brother Munachinzo Michael. We are admonished to stand in the gap with them in prayers and share in their joy. Number 12, tithes and offerings. You can pay your tithes, offerings, shilo sacrifices, and other kingdom commitments through the POS at the testimony stand on service days or through our church account detail, Living Faith Church Jahe, account number 10121526233. The bank is Zenith Bank. Note. The POS is neither for cash, withdrawal, nor for transfer. Number 13, transport support scheme. Opportunity abounds for those who want to sow seeds to assist brethren who may have the challenge of transporting themselves to and from church from all our catchment areas. Please use the following account details. Living Faith Church, Jai, account number 010645829. The bank is GT Bank. The Lord bless you richly for your seed sown. Number 14, the Winner Satellite Fellowship. The Winner Satellite Fellowship holds every Saturday at our various cell centers. The time remains 5 p.m. Please locate the nearest one to you, to your residence, and attend. Number 15, recommended books of the month, authored by Bishop David O. Oyedepo, includes... Finding Revival Fire, The Wisdom That Works, Walking in Wisdom, Conquering Controlling Powers, Walking in the Newness of Life, All You Need to Have Your Needs Met. Number 16, Good News. That loud can be louder. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 2nd of July, 2023, shall be our encounter with Destiny Service. If you are clapping, it can be bigger. It shall also double as our prophetic entrance service. Every everlasting mountain and perpetual hill on the part of everyone's glorious destiny shall be removed like a dream of the night. Come expecting an encounter with the prophetic world as it shall be a service to be much. Remember, the service schedule is 6.45 a.m. for the first service, 8.45 a.m. for the second service, and 10 for the 5 a.m. for the third service. Jesus is Lord. Put those hands together for him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. On this end of month, Thanksgiving and children dedication service, it is testimony time. The scripture speaking in Psalm 1 to 6, the scripture says in verse 1, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Some of our brethren have encountered this captivity turning God, and they are here to share their testimony with the people of God. Let's make welcome Elder Uyim Mbabio. Elder Uyim Mbabio, let's clap for Jesus as she makes her way to the altar. 
Also, let's make those hands bigger as we welcome Messi Casio Ikbe. Messi Casio Ikbe. Come straight. One minute straight to the point what the Lord has done for you. I have returned to give God all the glory. I'm Elder Mrs. Uyuma Fabio. I serve in the sanctuary and caps. I have returned to give God all the glory for his faithfulness in my life and my career. He's my savior, redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. And he has been a Ebenezer on behalf of the Institute for Ethics and Professional Studies, which I represent. We experience a bit of stagnation for some time. But during the open door, covenant day of open doors, God's servant in the house made prophetic declarations of open doors and ideas that would lead to breakthrough. It hit me and I grabbed it. To the glory of God, the door opened. And because I know that it was from God, I had to go back to him because he's a God of purpose. And the idea to keep the door open for a continuous relevance came. We were able to execute the project with our team of consultants. To the glory of God, the result shows that that idea was from God. And I have returned to give God the glory and to declare from this altar that God that has started this according to the order of Zerubbabel, using my hand, that he will keep my hand continuously relevant for the blessing of our country and the joy of our generation in Jesus. Put those hands together for Jesus. Good morning, church. My name is Mercy Kaiso Ikpe. I have come back to return all the glory to this God who is too faithful to fail. Um, I remember last year, 25th precisely, I got gloriously wedded in this church. That is the testimony. But from the beginning, it was not so. The devil rose his ugly head. And so many things were said concerning me that this one will not amount to anything. Not even marriage. And my, my wedding took place. Gloriously, the Lord did it. When the servant of God came, into, came to this church and it was announced, it was, it was um, announced on this altar, I said at the choir stand there, my season has come. And indeed, God made it happen. It didn't just make it happen. One year, it has not been easy, but God sustained us. God kept us. The plan of the enemy over my marriage didn't work. Today, I have returned like that one leopard to give God all the glory. So we put those hands together for Jesus. All testimonies are anchored on the word of God. That's the word is coming your way this morning, and you are next to share your own testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Put those hands together for Jesus. For those awesome testimonies, once again, put your hands together for Jesus. In this service, it is time to welcome the first timers. It is my privilege as given by God's servant, Pastor David Pukwola, to welcome some very special set of people into God's presence in this service. If today is your first time worshiping and living faith, Church Jai, on a Sunday service like this, may I request that you stand in God's presence. Church, give Jesus a big hand of praise as these precious people rise. Winners around them, welcome them with joy in the winner's way. Please remain standing. Our official will put in your hands a welcome package. And along with it is a form that you will need to fill in your details and also put in your prayer request. And I believe that God of this commission will grant your request speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, winners around them can assist them to fill those forms in the course of the service. 
God's servant will be calling you forward to proclaim upon you priestly blessings in the name of Jesus. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and his servant, Pastor David Popola. Please hear what is unique about this church. This church is ordained of God as a mountain of divine intervention, where every issue that has defiled solutions can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades, surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies as they believe. And since God is not a respecter of persons, expect the turnaround God to visit you also upon this mountain as you also believe. May today be your entry into the realms of divine intervention that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. And therefore, to all our first-timers, we say to you this morning, welcome to the winner's family and welcome home. Jesus is Lord. Please kindly take your seat. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord, I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. In this end of month Thanksgiving and dedication service that doubles as a covenant day of marital breakthrough, it is offering time. Someone that is excited shout aloud, my blessing time. Please package your tithe, your offerings, your transport, support seed, and whatsoever offering that you have brought to worship the Lord. And in case you need offering envelope, the ushers around you. <clears throat> now, if you want to use your check for your offering or your tithe, please make it out in favor of Living Faith Church, Jahi. And please remember to write your telephone number behind the check leave. And in case you want to offer your offering electronically, please look at the screen and the details are there. You want to do your offering, your tithe, use the Zeni Bank account details. And for your transfer support seed, use the GT Bank account details. Now, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8, every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And verse 8, he said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. You are set to worship the Lord with your tithe, your offering. Please rise upon your feet, lift it up above your head, and give him thanks for the privilege to come before him to offer this. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for the honor and the privilege to bring our tithe and our offerings and every other seed that we are packaged before you. Lord, let it ascend unto you as a sweet smelling savour. Let it be acceptable unto you. And Lord, look down upon your people. Shower each one with your blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, let each one return with a financial turnaround. In Jesus' precious name. Please, you may have your seat. Drop your offering as we invite the choir. Jesus, it's the 
glory has released upon your life and your family. Give him glory, give him thanks. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you glory for causing you to see the last Sunday, the sixth month of the year, 2023. Appreciate him from the depth of your heart for the good thing you have seen. Give him glory. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Ask God to speak to you again. Lord, send me my own word in this service. Speak to my heart. I'm ready to receive from you. Lord, speak to me. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, speak to us again. And let your name alone be exalted. We ask that your spirit take over in this service. Glorify yourself and give yourself a name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Celebrate Jesus again and please be seated. Amen. This morning I counted the great privilege given to me by my father, God's servant, our father, to bring God's word to us this morning. Thank you very much, sir. And I know that the grace back in our father will help me this morning and someone here will be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are not in first or second service, I was almost praying for the service to just continue. Amen. Please get to the studio and pick the CD and listen again and again. There is a word for you in that service. The Lord Almighty will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. A season of glory. That's our prophetic focus for the month. And it's going to be your testimony forever. A season of glory. Meaning no more shame. So anywhere you see shame around you, reject it. It's not your portion. It's not what God has ordained for you. It's not what God has ordained for your family. So whenever you see shame, react to it. But the good news is this. You will never see shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. There is something God has for you this season. And you must open up your heart, open up your spirit to be able to assess it. That's why we must all understand that revival is the move of the spirit of God among God's people. And it's ordained for supernatural restoration. There are things that happen in a man's life and they say this is the handwork of God. It's ordained for supernatural restoration. In Joel chapter 2, from verse 21, it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Meaning, in the midst of every trial, rejoice. In the midst of the happiness around you, rejoice. He said, For the Lord, not your father. Not your uncle, not anyone, but the Lord will do great things. Not just great things, but great things. I didn't hear amen from somebody. In verse 22, we read down. We discover what God has said. He said, be not afraid. That means no matter the report they give to you, don't be afraid. He said, ye beasts of the field, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig trees and the vine do ye their strength. In verse 23, he said, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately. So every blessing you are seeing is a moderate blessing. He said, He will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. See, we cause, see, we cause for you, for you and your family. The rain of God's blessing, it will fall upon your family. And if we read verse 25, he said, I will restore. Meaning it doesn't matter what you have happened, what have happened around you, what you have ever lost. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worms and the caterpillars and the palmer worms say, My great army which I send among you. Verse 26. He said, And ye shall eat in plenty. 
and be satisfied. And you will start praising the name of your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never, shall never be ashamed. And you are that God's people. You will never see shame. So seasons of revival are seasons where the glory of God overtake shame in the life of people. Where the glory of God comes down and shame is removed from the life of people. We must also understand that revival is the move of the Spirit of God among his people which is ordained to move men forward. So in seasons of revival, your life is expected to experience a turnaround. Because in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 6, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on an he can never be hid. Nothing can cover the glory of God in your life. That's why it says this like this. Be part of everything happening in church. Because that is what God has ordained. The devil might be planning his own, but his God's own will always stand. And that's why in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, he said, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fig be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail. He said, The fish shall yield no meat. He said, The floor shall be cut off from the sea, and there shall not be hairs in the state. Yet, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. Our father said in first service, Never allow anything to steal your joy. No matter the trials, no matter what is happening around you, God has a better plan. I will rejoice. Make up your mind to rejoice. Repeat the joy. You just finish one now. Repeat it again. Just keep rejoicing because I will do a great thing. It will happen in your family. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please understand that it is, uh, the, the revival season is also on, on, on ordained to unleash supernatural blessing upon us. It's ordained to unleash supernatural blessing upon us. It's also the move of the Spirit of God ordained to draft a multitude into the kingdom. Because when men see the happiness around your life, they will be asking you, what are you serving? People around your neighborhood, they will look at the testimonies happening in your life and say, which church are you going to? That's what will be happening this season. They'll be tapping on you, saying that we hold the skirt of him that said do, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. They will just see things happening and I say, no, this cannot be by the, or, 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 this cannot be by the hand of man. This can only be by the hand and the finger of God. God will do more great things for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. But the good thing you must do is that you must stay spiritually awake. This season, don't just allow the season pass by. Don't just get the word and get motivated. No, we're not motivating you here. The word is coming. Be a part of whatever is happening in church. They are praying morning 8 to 9, be there. If you are not there, connect where you are. At night, engage in it. You are closing from work. Pick up the flyers. Go and share the flyers. Oh, I'm too busy because my work. Let your, your resources go for you. But in all, by all means, be part of whatever is happening in God's kingdom. And God will continue to bless you. No one will be like Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 verse 16. He said, God is in this place and I know it not. Please understand that this season, God, the pool is dead. Everyone's testimony is here to be delivered. Open up your heart. Every time God's servant of our father step on this altar and release a declaration, catch it. Let it not be a season, a, a time where you are gisting and discussing. No. Because the good news is this. You are not remaining at that level. You are changing level in the name of Jesus. What is a revival? 
A revival is a move of the spirit across the people of all age. Group. Cumulated in diverse supernatural turnaround. A revival is a move of the spirit across the people of all age. Groups. Cumulating in diverse supernatural turnaround. It's not meant for others. But in seasons of revival, everyone is involved. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So everyone has this or a place in a revival. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see vision. Everyone have their place. Those children you call three years, four years, five years, they can do something. You can teach your children how to pray. Children say, gather multitude, gather it now. Oh Lord, gather multitude. In living faith, church, you'll be shocked. They'll be praying it. One day, a little child of five years old climb the table and gather the siblings and say, well, we need to pray now. Oh Lord, multitude, multitude, multitude in the church, multitude in the church. He's praying the prayer and God is hearing, God is answering. He answers the prayer of everyone. That's why every one of us must be involved. It will accumulate in our turnaround. Shall do your time, eight to nine in the evening, shoulder your activities, gather the family, engage in praying for the kingdom. Instead of sleeping all night and be chased by the devil, wake up at night. Wake up at night, pick up the, the at night and pray. You can get to the reception, ask them to give you prayer guide. There are prayer guide there. Praying for the word, praying for new convert, praying for God's servant. All, that, all the prayer points are there, free of charge. Collect it. Shall do your time. Engage in it. That 1,000 might little, little, but God value it so long as it's coming from your heart. Let your resources be there. And watch how God will decorate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3 to 5. He said, For I will pour waters upon him that is thirsty and flood upon the dry land, and I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offsprings. In verse 4. Upon thy offsprings, and they shall spring up among the grasses as willows by the water courses. And one shall say, I am the Lord. And among, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hands upon the Lord. And so name himself by the name of Israel. They will begin to spring for surprises. That's why be a part of it. Be a part of it. Our fathers are doing it. We all should do it. Don't be in this church and not be a part of soul winning. By all means, someone is babbing your hair. Someone is living in your neighborhood. Just have it in mind. Every day, Lord, connect me to a soul ready for harvest. God will use you mightily in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. He said, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful feed and the fruitful feed shall be counted for a forest until the spirit be poured upon us. So this season, the spirit of God is coming upon people, everyone, every engaging winner to bring about a total change of story for them. Your story will change for better. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please understand number two, a revival is the move of the spirit of God that unleashes the spirit of God prayer and supplication. It is a move of the Spirit of God that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people. Resulting in mass salvation of soul and explosive church growth. That season, there's a move, the interest, zeal, the interest, the enthusiasm to pray is there. Prayer is no longer a burden for every engaging winner. Not just a winner that comes to church. Because you are engaging in praying for the kingdom. As you are praying for the kingdom, God is also changing things around you. 
And second service, our father said, he also recap and, and make emphasis on that, that prayer does not just change things. Prayer changes people. So every time you're engaging in praying for the advancement of the kingdom, God is also turning your life around. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, he said, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. There are many here now. Prayer is a burden to you, and you know. Once prayer is raised, five minutes prayer, it's as if they put in doses around you. You are sleeping off. You have slept off. But since it's like this, you cry to God, Lord, revive me. Because when your prayer life is done, your life is also going down. Please understand that this spirit empowers believers for fervency on the prayer altar. For fervency on the prayer altar. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. It's a spirit that helped our infirmity. He said, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what, what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. So we must engage our spirits. Pick up the prayer guide. Stay, set up five, five minutes or four, four minutes, my prayer point. Pray it one week. Things will change around Pray it one week, you desire it on. Because you watch at everyone in winner's family, we are praying one prayer point. Number two, the same. And that's the reason multitude won't keep coming to this church. Now as you are praying that Lord, move your church forward. Let multitude gather in church. God will also be moving your life forward. God will move your life forward. In the mighty name of Jesus. God Almighty will move your life forward. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please understand that if you engage in this, it will fire your prayer life. And terminate weakness on the altar of prayer. This season, you, are, you, are, you catch that spirit and you are engaging in it. It will terminate weakness around you. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. There are many, their spirits are willing, but the flesh is weak. But you are in this service today, the spirit of God will come afresh on you. In the name of Jesus. It will help to keep the fire burning in your life and in your family. Because in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, so that the light will not be, the fire will not be put off. He said, and the fire upon the altar shall be what? Burning in it. And it shall not what? Be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it. And every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. Verse 13. He said, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. So every time we engage in revival, our fire, the fire in our prayer life, we keep burning and can never be put off. Your fire in your prayer life will never be put off in the name of Jesus. When do we say a revival is set to occur? When praying kingdom of heaven prayer become a delight. When praying kingdom of heaven prayer become a delight. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. He said, but Thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father who seeth in the secret. And the Father that seeth in the secret shall the word thee openly. There's going to be open the word for somebody here. In the mighty name of Jesus. In verse 9 and 10 of that same scripture, it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which has in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth. So every time we keep praying for the kingdom, the interest is there. When you discover that praying for the kingdom, you are doing it with delight. No, you are in a revival. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7. He said, pray with us, season. We are engaging in a revival. We are praying for the advancement of the prayer of the kingdom. And you are doing it with delight. Number two, when one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. When you see people living in sin, you are crying in, the, in, in your inside. You are doing every possible to make sure that souls are won into the kingdom. 
you know you are in a revival. In John chapter 15, verse 16, he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should what? Remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul was saying, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So every time you discover that going out to, to get so saved, you are just excited doing it. No, you are in a river. You can't just stay a week, a day without going out for soul winning, without talk, telling somebody about Jesus. No, you are in a revival. Every one of us, may that grace come upon us in the name of Jesus. What is in a revival for us? We are not just doing this for fun. There's a there's benefit for us. Number one, the life of every engaging believer is transformed in a revival. You are engaging in praying for the kingdom. God is changing, turning things around in your life. Every engaging believer, the life is transformed. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7, he said, for your shame, ye shall have double. And every everlasting joy shall be unto them. So every time you are engaging, praying for the kingdom. Now, there are parents are here that are investing in the kingdom today that your children won't struggle tomorrow. That's why you must do whatever you are doing with understanding. Every time my father is sharing testimony, he's not just doing that, he's doing that to encourage you. What he's doing is sowing into the future. That's why every one of us be be part of it the little you can. The much you can be part of it. In Zechariah chapter 8 verse 20 to 23, he said, and said the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts and I will go also. And ye, many people, and said to the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of the languages of the nation and shall take hold of the, the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. May God Almighty continue to be with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, what is in the revival for me? Every move of the Spirit confer dominion on every engaging believer. Man, mark the place engaging believer. So not just that you are a believer, but that you are engaging in the season. You are praying for the kingdom. God releases power upon them. He said, and the Lord walking with them, confirming their word with signs and wonder. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, he said, Lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. So every time we are on the go for God, we are going of his presence around us. May the presence of God surround you and your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please understand in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. He said the fruit of righteousness is the truth of life. And he that winneth a soul is wise. So if when you want to look around, every soul winner is a wise man. And they are ordained to reign. You will reign in this season. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Our needs are supernaturally met in a revival. So as we are busy praying for the advancement of the kingdom, God is also advancing your life. God is also touching things that concerns you and your family. The Bible says in Luke chapter 22, verse 35, and he said unto them, when I send you without pause and skip, shoo, lack ye anything. And they said nothing. Don't be surprised. There are many here that all through, since the year began, they have never talked to one person. And they have baptized, ordained, worker, archbishop, ad pope, they are here, but they have never gone out. It's not to hear the word, but it's to do the word. I receive grace to obey God's word. I receive grace to do that. I receive that grace right now. I receive grace to obey every instruction from this altar. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Rise upon your feet. Bow your head in one minute. Quickly, you are here. You want to rededicate your life afresh to Jesus. You are here, you are struggling in your, in, your, in, your, you are struggling in your spiritual life. All the things they say, you hear it, but to do it is a problem. And you want to say, God, I surrender to you, help me. 
To pray is a problem. To go out for soul winning is a problem. You want to do it. It's in your heart to do it. But to go out is a problem. And you want the help of God. Wherever you are, just wave your hands to Jesus. You want to rededicate afresh your life to Jesus. Please wave your hands wherever you are. Wherever you are. Wave your hand. Please come straight to the altar. Quickly come. Come to the altar. Come quickly to the altar. Come. Come quickly to the altar. I want to rededicate my life afresh. Please come. Rush down to the altar. I'm struggling with my prayer life. To pray is a challenge. I need the help of God. Come. Wherever you are, don't look at anybody. It's personal. It's personal. I am struggling. I can't pray for 30 minutes. I can't pray for 10 minutes. I'm struggling in my spiritual life. I want God to help me. I want God to help me. Rush down, rush down here. I want God to help me. I want to serve God. I want to be a soul winner from today. I need the help of God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Place your right hand on your chest and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I surrender to you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you. In Jesus. Look at our pastor. They have a word for you. With Jesus' joy again, let's celebrate Jesus as we make welcome our Father to bless us. Big up for Jesus. Louder, louder, louder for Jesus. Louder, louder for Jesus. Amen. Lift up your hands to heaven and let's thank God for that word that we have just received from God through his servant. The Lord has spoken to us expressly again in this third service. Let God hear your voice of appreciation. Hallelujah. Give him thanks, give him thanks. What a word we have received in this third service. The Lord has spoken to us, let's give him thanks. Let's appreciate him. Now begin to ask God, Lord, help me to love you more. Put your zeal for kingdom stewardship in my heart. Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Give me grace to be obedient to your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, give me grace, give me grace. Give me grace to be obedient to your voice. I've heard your word. Lord, give me grace. Lord, I receive grace from you. Grace to be obedient to your instruction. Grace, 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 grace. Somebody is asking for grace. For you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. I've ordained you to go and bring food to abide, and whatever you ask, for that my name shall be given you. Lord, help me, help me. Take all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have received. For ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So you have no choice than to follow me, said the Lord. John 15, 16. Don't refuse him. It's a calling. Don't refuse it. And I've ordained you, so every child of God is an ordained worker. Ordained minister. Ordained Jehovah witness. Ordained kingdom diplomat. Ambassador for Christ. To go and bring fruits. John 15, 2. Any branch that does not bring fruit shall be cut off. Now, this is not talking about physical annihilation. It's talking about spiritual disconnection. It's still alive, but it's not relevant. <laughs> It's an ordained worker in church, but it's not relevant because your relevance in the system is a function of your contributions. If you are not making anything happen, you can carry title. There is no entitlement in title. You won't be blessed because you're a pastor. You'll be blessed because you will do what God says. You can be a fiery person preacher of prosperity. If you are not a giver, you will lack. You will beg. God forbid. <laughs> because the only certified antidote registered for 
prosperity, out of poverty, out of penury, out of lack, is giving. Giving is living. Symbiotic, not parasitic. You give, I give. That is it. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. If the only thing you sow as a choir member is song, congratulations. Even on your wedding day, best will come and sing for you. <laughs> but as you are sorry, uh, your gift, your divine prowess, your endowment as a gospel minister, you're also doing other things. If it is prosperity, you're a giver, cheerful giver. You want all our fulfillment? Go and win souls. That's the anchor of our destiny. Nobody will fail here. Amen. None of us will fail here. Amen. As your fruit abide, is there anything you ask the Father in my name? It's delivered. Please, one month has gone. Remaining just one month. And the reward that God will come with his rewards in his hand. Revelation 22 verse 12. Behold, I come quickly with my rewards in my hand to give unto every man according to their work shall be according to you. It is your work that determines your what. Your what determines your lot. Your lot determines your testimonies. Do something. Life responds to seed sowing. Genesis 8, 22. Galatians 6, 7 to 10. Luke 6, 38. Acts 20, 35. You do nothing. You have nothing. We are in harvest season. Please, let's stay awake. This season, God's glory will show forth in your life. Shout amen for yourself. Once again, for that powerful work, give God a very big hand as you take your seats. Now, quickly before we close in this service, remember that today is our covenant day of marital breakthroughs. You will experience supernatural breakthrough in your marriage. Your marital destiny shall be preserved. You and your own spouse shall live long together. You shall live in amen to that. And everyone that is yet to be married, every eligible single ready for marriage this year, before December 31st, by God's favor, you shall be maritally settled. Amen. If there be any cause, any enchantment, any divination, any gift of the devil, every voice of the stranger, any sickness, any disease that is an entrance to your marital settlement, the law will subdue them for you today. Amen. This year, they will rejoice with your family Amen. because you are getting married this year. Amen. And everyone that is already married, congratulations. You will enjoy your spouse forever. Shout a living amen. amen. Now, sometimes I wonder, when praying for some people and you say, you and your wife shall live down together, some men will not say amen. I don't know why. They will say amen to everybody. will not say, you and your wife will, stay, will live down together. They will say amen. Over here, No. Either you like it or not, that is your wife forever. Amen. That is your husband forever. Amen. Any strange woman or strange girl that wants to take away your husband, God will punish them. Ah, you almost stood up. <laughs> okay. Any man, anywhere. They want to snatch your wife. God will punish for you. <laughs> you will not lose your spouse. Please.
please understand that every marital crisis, every marital tension, every marital challenges is the devil's and the work. Although some people don't even know about that. Don't believe that. Uh, no, it's normal in our family. That, I mean, it's a normal thing. No! Which family? If you are born again, Revelation 5, 9, and 10, you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ unto our God as a king and a priest from every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every language. You are now a king and a priest to rule. Your case is different. That they don't get married early in your family does not mean that you also will experience the same satanic manipulation. So excuse yourself. Set the pace. Set the pace. Be the first person that will experience marital bliss. And today, that is happening in your favor. Amen. Every challenge, marital destiny, such as marital delays, marital crisis, are mostly raw oppressions of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Matthew chapter 13, verse 28, Master, but you planted good seeds. I said to them, an enemy has done this. Whatever the enemy has done against your marital destiny shall be cleared up for you today. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 32, verse 18, see the will of God. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, in short dwellings, in quiet resting places. That is the will of God. Husband and wife to be living like Tom and Jerry in the house. You now stay in the same house for one week, you are not talking. What kind of life is that? The husband will sleep face the west, the wife will sleep face the east. He will put pillow, Satan, in between them. Don't touch me, oh! If you touch me, Penny, you will see the other side of my life. Ah, Kilo de. You didn't marry your enemy now. And when you were running after that young lady, and she will say, no, I can't marry you. You say, I vow with my life. I will take care of you. Now you have married her. Ah, you are doing what you like. Repent. 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 I've asked you before that if you're a man that you are now, can you pray that your children should marry someone like you? You are a man, you have children, and you have daughters. Can you ever pray that? May God give your children the kind of husband that you have? He said, God forbid. <laughs> Can you pray that your sons to marry this kind of woman that you are? You said to fear what? <laughs> life is a seed. If you were a woman, can you marry this kind of person that you are as a man? If you were a man, you were a man, you were a man, can you pray that God should give this kind of wife the way you are? This is your kind of woman. Can you pray? No, for all I will now. Check it now. Let's learn to be compassionate. Let's learn to be accommodating. Let's learn to accept each other the way we are. There's no perfect man, no perfect woman. We came from different backgrounds financial, family, uh, social, academic. Let us learn to persevere, to endure, to tolerate. Let us learn to be patient with each other. 
life is but one. You have been married for 10 years now, and you 10 years be pack out, packing, fight, abuse. So when are you going to enjoy your life? You have wasted the, you have wasted the 10 years now. And I say, Christian, you are not permitted to marry two wives. I say, we want to go to hell. <laughs> Polygamy is advanced adultery. <laughs> I think we should close. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> but it's for your sake. I am enjoying my home. My father, Bishop David, or the way enjoying his home, decide to enjoy your own home. Your wife cries day and night. She has to pretend in public as if things are going on well. But she knows that things are not going on well. And some people are praying that they may their family be like your own. Because they thought it is well with your family. Imagine that. <laughs> but when they see you up there, they say, ah, ah, this family is perfect. And they are using your own as a point of contact. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> even when they will say, God forbid you. <laughs> they don't know my husband. They don't know my wife. Now fire for fire. I am a tank. <laughs> but you don't marry, you don't marry. But there is no one that God cannot rehabilitate. That's why we come to church. To be changed. To be transformed. To be helped out. Some people do some things that they don't even like. They don't like it. They want peace in their home. They are not happy. But pride will not allow them to come down to say, I'm sorry. That word sorry can solve so many problems. I've said sorry to my wife so many times. I've said sorry to me so many times. I pray for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your home shall be peaceful. Yeah. Your marriage will not scatter. Amen. You will not lose your spouse. Amen. You know we provide your children. Amen. God will uphold your home for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please understand that every child of God that so desires has the God-given heritage to be settled in marriage. It is your right to be married. As a child of God. So you are the God given heritage to be married. So if you are not yet married, please claim your right from God. Make sure you live a righteous life. Don't flirt around. Keep yourself, keep your body. Make sure you are serving God. Make sure you walk with God and you obey God. And stand your ground. The Lord. I must be married. My lineage must not end with me. My lineage must not go into extinction. Never. No. No. Take it by force. Wherever my husband is, let him not rest. I cease his peace. Come now. Whatever veil is covering from being located, Lord, remove it now. Favor for marital settlement I receive. We thank God. We started about two, three weeks ago. It's been awesome. 30 minutes of prayer to open heavens for marital settlement. For miracle children, three weeks, we've gotten six testimonies. It's sharp, 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 sharp. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It is not good for a man or a woman to be alone. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Also, our father to our father to go to and has obtained favor from God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one. They will have a good reward for their labor. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. No of them shall want their mate. They shall be mated. Psalm 68, verse 6. God said it's only three in families and breaks change of them that are tied down. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30. 
Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 13. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? I said, God brought, has brought them together. So marriage is God, God's institution for the betterment of mankind. God established it to make our lives better, not miserable. In case marriage has become miserable, has become unpleasant in your family, I command divine intervention today. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 33, from verse 10 to 11. See what is going to happen this year. Thus said the Lord again, there shall be art in this church. What? Verse 11. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. This year, in your family, the voice of the bridegroom shall be heard. The voice of the bride shall be heard. The voice of your husband shall be heard. The voice of your wife shall be heard. In the name of Jesus Christ. Also understand that marriage is a good thing. And every good thing is our, in, is our entitlement in Christ, including a fulfilled marital life or marriage life. Marriage is good. James 1, 17, everything that is good comes from God. Psalm 34, verse 10, it says, No good thing will live with all for them that are seeking. Psalm 84, verse 11, the Lord God is the Son and she, if we give her grace and glory, ah, no good will live with all from them that walk uprightly. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. As evil as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will you have for that give without good thing that you ask of him? And marriage is good. Genesis 2 18. So today, every eligible single ready for marital settlement this year, receive your own good inheritance. Amen. Receive your own good inheritance. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In case you have. Storms in your home. How do I come out of that? Where any marriage has no sure foundation in Christ, then the individual's concerned must ask for forgiveness through genuine repentance if they must experience times of refreshing in their marriage. Maybe you got married just anyhow. You are forced to impregnate somebody or you did or you by error of omission or commission or pleasure or intentionally you impregnated somebody and that you should now become your wife. Meet me at the park marriage of a garage. Maybe the foundation was not perfected. God is saying, forget the past. Now that you are married, don't say, hey, thank God. Since we didn't marry in church, I have never paid the bride price. She only has four children for me. We are not married. We are only co habiting. There is no marriage there. So I can now say that I married the, the person that I will take to the altar and that I will pay. You don't know. Ah. Oh, Lord, be kinking. Oh, Lord, be kinking. You are married. I hereby declare you married. <laughs> I now confirm your marriage. <laughs> your children have joined you together. And you are now married. And you are now married. But what can to go and pay the pie price? But for those that have not crossed to that side, don't try it. Don't try it. If the foundation be faulty, there's nothing the righteous can do. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winks at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Now, don't do it again. You have done it before. No, we are sorry. We didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. We are sorry. Forgive us. That is all. You are now married for life. I hereby dedicate to marriage. In the name of God the Father, the Son of Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, you are now married. Married. I'm saying you are married now. I, because they say any sin will remain shall be remitted. So I remit your sins. You are now married. That is, if you are already together and you have children together, you are now married. Say, so thank God. What kind of thing is this? Bible is the thing. Say, I'm now married. Say, I'm now married. <laughs> 
Marriage is honorable when the bed remains undefined. Hebrews 13 4. So if you are in courtship, it is a sin to be having premarital sex. You are defiling the temple of God. You are destroying the future of your marriage. You are creating trouble for yourself. He said, sinners and warmongers and fornicators, God will judge. Don't wait till you are judged. Repent today. Hebrews 13, 4. Acts 3, 19. He said, repent therefore and be converted, so that your sins can be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the Lord, you can also be refreshed. When there is no revival, please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. If you are in courtship and your body is shaking, anytime you see your fears and you feel like, you feel like, you feel like, that means go and marry. Bring her to my office. We can fast track it. Go and pay bright price. Do registry. Come and do marriage blessing. It is better to have that than to be committing fornication. You don't, you are not paying anything. You are not paying. It is, you, you are not giving profit offering. Free of charge. Free marriage. Three months courtship. If you cannot contain again. Please. This is better. This is better. This is better. You will not miss your place in destiny. Amen. But everyone going through marital challenges should seek light from the word of God. And through anointed books on marriage by proven authors that have testimonies like Bishop David Oedipo, read their books. Daniel said, he said, I understood by books. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 said, study to show yourself approved unto God as a welcome heart. Did I not be assured that by the word of truth? Read books. There are some people that are married, they have never read any book on marriage. They have never listened to any message on marriage. No, 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 no. They are doing it following the culture and the tradition of their village or town. This is how we do it in our village. When you cook for your husband, you go on your two knees. Oh, no, oh, read me, oh, come back by jail. Put on the table. And you need to finish eating. <laughs> In our village, women are not permitted to talk when men are talking. I'm talking, you are talking. Uh-uh. Oh. Allow for free and open communication. Let there be peace enforced in your home. It is not enough to assess light, we must walk in it. Light is sweet. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 8, verse 7. But walk in the light. Ephesians 5 8. Remember, rebellion against the covenant of marriage will bring tension to the home. What is the covenant? Ephesians 5, verses 22 to 25. Wives, submit to your husband in all things. Husband, love your wife. If you love, you will show care, compassion. If you love, you will give. If you love, you will forgive easily because love covereth multitudes of sins. Submit to your husband. Listen to your husband. Allow him to lead you. There is no way the neck can outgrow the head. Huh? Your neck just say it's going like this, so leaving the head. It's not possible. No. Learn to submit and love each other. Finally, biblically, in marriage, the two partners have become one flesh. Living apart from each other is a risk. It is a breeding ground for temptation to sexual immorality that destroys. If not repented of, it is too late. It can become too late. First Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 to 10. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. Your body is God's temple. Don't let it be destroyed. Step out of fornication. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 9. What's our God has joined together? Let no one put asunder. So embrace sanctification. Now, I stand in the four services. Please, whatever God has joined together, 
Let not put us on that. This vogue of Japa. Japa vogue. You know Japa? Everybody is Japa and Japa and Japa. Show my Japa. Please. Please. Don't let Japa jam your marriage. Listen to me. Be careful. Caution. Caution. There is no way a single parent can successfully raise godless children. It's not possible. Your children need the warmth of the father and of the mother to fulfill destiny. You now let your wife and children in Canada and you are in Nigeria. You now doing MTL phone, live uh, video call every day, every night, wasting your money. And every three, three months you must go. Or six months you must go. What kind of life is that? When are you going to enjoy your life? Are you hearing me now? If all of you are not relocating, call them back home. There is nothing wrong in relocating if it is the will of God. But why should your wife and your children be in the United Kingdom? Not for vacation, not for holiday, not for tourism, but to be there permanently and you are in Nigeria. Because you can afford it, you are not flying around, flying around like a bird. You don't like it, but that is the truth. You are hungry, but that is the truth. I tell you the truth. What kind of life is that? You hate it, but that is the truth. Truth is bitter. Swallow it. It is not correct. Whatever God has joined together, let no man, let no... Let no job. So people, my wife said, "Look, yes, if one say that they take it easy now, that what that men are following, yes, she said now, that they take it easy, that they take it easy, it easy, it easy." I know as long that they take it easy, you are too hard on them. <laughs> that the men of that hallelujah, that they take it easy now. <laughs> this is a family meeting. I want you to believe God. For his perfect way to be done in your life, it is possible. If God wants your family to relocate, it will make all things to work out. Yes, they can go first, but go and join them. After two or three, four months, maximum six months, go and join them. If it is not possible, let them come back home. They are suffering there. They are suffering. Now, now they are in Canada. You are still paying their bills from Nigeria. What kind of life is that? You are still paying their bills from Nigeria. They are not self-sustained uh, there. You are still paying their bills. What? Please, what God has joined together, don't use insensitivity to put us on that. No, 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 Pastor. We trust each other. We trust each other. No, 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 no. It's not about fornication or adultery. It is breaking the covenant of marriage we're talking about. You can't be wiser than God. If you want to move as a family, move. But if you don't have the plan of joining them, let them come back home. Stand on your feet. We are going home. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. And now lift up your hands to ask God to bless your home. Ask God to bless your family. Lift up your hands and ask him. Ask him for the blessing of God upon your family. Ask him to bless your family. Ask him to bless your family. Somebody pray that prayer. Lord, bless my family. Bless my family. Bless my family. Bless my family. Let your blessing come upon my family also. Somebody pray for your family now. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for your children. Pray for your healers. Pray for your siblings. No matter are not married to be married this year. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now stretch your hand toward this altar of life. Stretch your hands. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand as a son of prophet David Olani Oedipo. I stand as a saint one. I hereby command 
the blessing of the living God upon every family under the sound of my voice now. Yeah. Every married couple, you shall live long together with your whole spouse. Yeah. Every family believing God for miracle children, receive now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every family believing God for resources, financial resources, miracle job, financial breakthrough, freedom from indebtedness, promotion, scholarship, receive now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Whatever makes for peace, joy, quietness, serenity, unity in a home that is lucky in your family, receive now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Whatever be the generational causes, enchantment and divination, making your family life miserable, they are broken for yourselves now. Yeah. I pray if there be any sickness, terminal, ordinary, seasonal, or hereditary in your families, in the name of Jesus Christ, they be terminated today. Yeah. In case you have children at their wayward, they are not making you happy. They are causing you at break. Now, I command the power of the Ghost to rest upon your children, to rehabilitate them, and to restore their destinies. Yeah. If there be any child that have gone wayward, too far to be brought back, whatever they are, I command the power of the Holy Ghost to restore them, to arrest them, to bring them back to the family. Amen. If there be any broken home, I ask for the spirit of forgiveness, a restoration, a reconciliation to happen before the end of this month. Amen. If there is anyone being threatened by divorce, separation, they are divorced, about to divorce, I command peace be still. Amen. Peace be still. Peace be still. And for every eligible single ready for marriage, I command favor. Favor to locate, to be located. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. That before the close of this year, before Shiloh 2023, you shall be gorgeously married. Gloriously married. Gracefully married. Whatever veil that is covering you from being located by your God or the husband, be removed now. Yeah. Every barrier between you and your God or dead life partner be leveled down for you now. Yeah. I hear by the name of God the Father, the Son Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Ghost, rededicate every family unto God to enjoy peace, divine health, long life. Fruitfulness, prosperity, unity, cohesion, oneness, love, favor, blessings, long life, peace of mind, marital stability, marital breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ, your families be preserved. We and our spouses, we shall live long to see our children, children, children. Our blessings are preserved. Every child in this church shall be mighty upon the earth. They shall make us proud. No shall be a concern to all. They shall live to declare the words of God. They will serve God. They will love God. They will do better than God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, wave your hands to God and give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Give him a big hand. I pray be seated. Congratulations. Now, good news, everyone, good news. Please be seated, it is done. If today happens to be your first Sunday service in Living Church, I would like to pray with you, wherever you are, be upstanding and come to the front for pastoral blessing. Also, if you are here to give your offerings and tithes, you can meet late, lift up your tithes and offerings as we also pray for you. Now, your tithes and offerings are acceptable, accepted and blessed, be rewarded in Jesus' name. Today is your first Sunday service, come over, I want to pray with you. Give God a big hand. Good news. Our daily covenant gospel days, gospel days, we'll be holding again this week. We thank you for your turnout last week. Eight to nine in the morning, we pray, and from there, we step out. 
Also, five to six in the evening, we also pray. We gather here to pray. And for those of you that are working far distances from your offices and shops and locations, you can step out from there for evangelism and outreaches in groups, individuals, in family. Get a partner with you that will facilitate that uh, productivity or the other sphere. So we are materials in the office, a lot of them, pick as many, and make sure you are part of this move. Do not touch yet, it is set the day that the world that call will come. God will reward you in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, our daily corner prayer meetings will run from Monday to Saturday, 6 o'clock in the morning. And tomorrow will be the first working day of the month or in the week. We are here for a special invitation for the week. And very good news. <laughs> On Wednesday, we are waiting upon the Lord, and it's going to be our crowning blessing Holy communion service. The balance of our blessing for the month of June, the first half of the year, shall be released to us on Wednesday. So make sure you are either you are fasting or not, five o'clock here with your family for that special Holy communion service. Also on Saturday, we, our home set is 5 p.m. And early in the morning, the first day in the month of July, 2023 is Saturday. So we'll be having our trumpet service in the morning. Give God a big hand for that. We are pressing our way to the new month, and very, very good news now. Next Sunday is Encounter with Destiny Service. Give God a very big hand for that. Your destiny shall be preserved. So make sure next Sunday you don't come alone. We have had the message. Let somebody come with you, and God bless you. Beloved, thank you for being part of our job today. This is Lee Church Jahi, where God does amazing things. We are so elated, glad, and excited having you here today. You must have been blessed in the course of the service. Now, your family is blessed forever. Keep on coming. Next thing is the, it's our prophetic entrance service and also our encounter uh, with destiny service. Come and give it to family members and God bless you. We have this testimony. You cannot be here for three consecutive months without to change your story. Your story must change and it will change in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I bless you. I bless your families. I bless the words of your hand. It shall be well with you. Great to love and serve God here forever. Receive now. As you go from here, everyone will open your lives to bless your families in the name of Jesus Christ. We have some gifts for you. And one of our pastors is there. Go follow that pastor. Collect your gift before you go back home. And God bless you. Please allow them to go. Give God a very big hand. Big, 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 big hand. Big, big, big hand. Hallelujah. What? Good news. Good news. In the second service, we prayed for the new chief of Navastar. He's a member of our church here. Amen. Now, the deputy governor of Benin State was to be in this service. Uh, he's also a member of this church. Amen. The governor of Delta State is also a member of this church. And we have so many senators and all of them here. To God alone be all the glory. This year, God will promote you. In your career, God will advance you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, rise on your feet. Let's go home. Wave your hands to God for what he has done today. Bless the name of the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him praise. Now, go in peace. Remain preserved by the Lord. Yeah. As you go to the harvest feed this week, there's a bump of souls. Yeah. This week, God will reward you. Yeah. The balance of your blessing for the month and the first half of the year will come to you especially this week. Yeah. You and your families are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you. God will surprise you this week in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is going to bag a political appointment this week. That will change your story for life. Amen. That person, this week, this week, the good news is coming your way. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's share the goodness together, surely. God's own goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am following the covenant and we have life. Congratulations. God bless you. Tell your neighbor, my family is blessed forever. Please rejoice with me. Say to seven people, my family is blessed forever. Please rejoice with me. My family is blessed forever. Please rejoice with me. My family is blessed forever. Please rejoice with me. My family is blessed forever. Please rejoice with me. Our elders are blessed forever. Your families are blessed forever. 
Your spouses are blessed. Your in-laws are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your grandchildren are blessed. In your lifetime, your children will make you proud. Forever they will serve your God. You shall remain strong. You shall remain healthy. You shall enjoy the fruits of your labor. God will add to your honor, to your joy. It will keep you healthy. It will keep you healthy. None of your children will be a concern to you. You will not sorrow over your children. You will not bury your children. They will make you proud. God will elongate your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are all blessed. Can we shout hallelujah as we jump to them? Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's how you'll be jumping. At each other, you're still jumping. In Jesus' name, be blessed.